Bedore, your host, and we are talking about the biz life, business life, not the busy life. So, and we're actually going to be talking to my wife today, the one, the only, the sexiest guest that I'll ever have on my show. Did I say that out loud? Yeah. Okay. Pretty loud. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, and it's Valentine's week. It is. It's Valentine's it's, week. So if I don't have my wife on the show this week, then I'm... Then when are you going to do it? I'm in the, I'll be in the doghouse. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we have my wife, Selena Bedore. Um, 30 years this year, been together. Mm -hmm. Man, time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're talking uh, today about the business life, um, women in business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so did you ever dream that you were going to be in business whenever you were a little girl, right? It's like one of the things that you dream of. Absolutely not. Yeah. No, I was going to be a nurse. A nurse? Yeah. I knew that. <laughs> I knew that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, all right. So welcome. Thank you. Some people don't know who you are or you know anything about you. So tell us, who uh, is this Selena? This. <laughs> who is Sal? Yeah. Um, well, my name is Selena, and I have been married for 25 years to this guy across from me. Um, we have three kids, all adults, ages 20, 22, and 24. A adults would be like loosely? Well, they are <laughs> legal adults. Legal adults. Okay. There you go. <laughs> um, as far as the world recognizes them, they are legal. But anyway, mm. uh, I got one in college. Uh, we just became empty nesters. Yay! Like, like what, three weeks ago, maybe? Uh, youngest one moved out to go to college, um, and then our Bye, two boys. Felicia. Yeah, <laughs> poor Gracie. <laughs> Bye, we, Felicia. We miss you, Gracie. Um, but uh, yeah, boys are been living on their own since 2019, 2020, and so uh, they help us run the businesses. They all three are involved in all the businesses that we do. So yeah, yeah. Um, I May mean, I tell you? You know, you, you look at success, right? And and a lot of people especially in the business world, it's like, hey, if you have a business, you know, and it's making profit and uh, it's growing, you have multiple locations, you know, whatever, that's success. And I tell you, I think that compels, pels, not compels, it pels in comparison to someone that has raised three amazing adults. I mean, I'd like to think so. You did really good. They're, I think. They're, they definitely are contributing to society and not leeching off of society. So uh, I'd like to think that's a win. Yeah, I'd <laughs> say so. Yeah. Well, let's get right into it. I know we're going to be short on time a little bit. Um, but uh, so as a female business owner, right? Well, first, what businesses do you own? Well, um, I own Gray's Craze Charcuterie Boards and Boxes. I have a location in Fort Worth off of Brian Irvin, and then I'm in partnership with my sister-in-law in the uh, Plano location. So I have two of those. Nice. Um, also, um, a partner, kind of a silent partner, maybe not so silent partner, in the TX Black Belt Academies with you yeah. and our nine locations that we have. So uh, dabble in that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You definitely were a huge uh, contributing factor to growing those locations. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Could not have done it without you thank whatsoever. You. Um, so you, you know a lot about business now, right? Not that you dreamed about it whenever no. you were a little girl, no. but... Um, as a female business owner, um, what are some of the um, challenges or opportunities that you have faced in this journey with Gray's Craze or any of the businesses, right? What are some, as, as, as being a female business owner? Right? So, you know, we females can be very emotional. Um, I attest and to so, that. so <laughs> I think the most, the biggest challenge for me is what's to do what's best for the business and not what's my emotions want to do, especially when you come to a crisis or a, a problem or whatever, you definitely have to learn how uh, to put your emotions aside mm. and to do an evaluation on that before you make decisions. Um, because, you know, I do, uh, I'm not a very relaxed person by nature. I'm kind of uh, do have um, an anxious 
um, personality. So I can get riled up pretty quickly. But the, the, I think the most challenging thing is for me to learn to um, set my emotions aside to do what's best for a business when there's a decision to be made. Mm, yeah. You know, I don't know, and, and I don't want to sound sexist or anything, but it does seem like, you know, a lot of guys are not connected to their emotions mm-hmm. as much as women are. So for us sometimes to make a decision in the interest of business, then maybe our emotions aren't tied up to it so much. And it might be a little bit easier mm-hmm. where on, you know, for a female being connected to those emotions, I'm not saying it's a hindrance whatsoever. No, I no. think it's actually, you know, here, okay, here's an example, right? Where you're connected to those emotions a lot more than I am. So you know this, but our audience doesn't know this. So whenever I go to meet someone new and discuss maybe a business opportunity, I'm very adamant that you're with me, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, not that necessarily you'll be in those businesses or those opportunities, but you're so connected to your emotions and then just the discernment that comes with that, that I lean on that. I have to have that, mm-hmm. right? And I think that's a where I'm weak, you're strong, and, and vice versa. And so, yeah, but even in still in that, I have to kind of sit back and chew on it for a little bit because if I'm trying to read somebody and I still kind of want my uh, selfish ways, you know, to come out instead of, you know, again, what's best. And yeah. um, I do have to chew on it for a little bit. I can't just on the spot, make a decision on, Hey, that's a good idea or not. (laughs) Right. Right. All right. So if you're listening or watching, uh, we need you to like, share, subscribe, hit that subscribe button. If you're watching on our YouTube channel and send this out to any female that's in business. So that's what we're looking for today. we really want to encourage and help and inspire, uh, women in business. So if you know someone that's in business, that's female, then, um, please send it out. Okay. So, here we go. Let's go next. Uh, what about opportunities, right? Uh, what opportunities have you found just being a woman in business? Um, well, I think being coming from a stay-at-home mom for the most part um, life, uh, being able to connect with people, especially mm. women. Um, I don't know how guys connect, but women. Hey, def- bro. How are you? Yeah. Good. How are you? You know, we can go on like a five hour car ride, yeah. say three words, <laughs> yeah. and leave and be like, bro, oh, that, I that, was the, the world, man. that was the best uh, yeah. ride ever. Yeah. That was so cool. Well, that's how we connect. We have, we like to get together <laughs> and we like to um, come together as like minded women. And yeah. I think so, opportunities for me have been just to meet a lot of amazing women um, and, be able to have women only groups that we can come to because mm. it's intimidating, right? I mean, um, just like with the martial arts, you know, um, it's a it's a male dominant um, field, entrepreneurship, and so it's um, mm. you know it's it's nice to have a group and community of women that will come together that are like minded that want to empower each other, help each other, give you know, give each other business, uh, things like that. So uh, those opportunities have definitely been big in the past maybe year and a half for me. Yeah, good. Yeah. Excellent. Um, As far as empowering women in business, right, um, you actively participate in a a group called Women in Business, Mm -hmm. okay? Um, It's a networking group, Mm -hmm. right? Um, How do you believe these groups empower women entrepreneurs and uh, what role has have uh, they played in your personal entrepreneur journey? So, I'm a part of several um, women in business groups. You could say uh, Tarrant County area business women in business, and then Collin County area women in business are my main one that I attend on a monthly basis, um, and then that I've made the most connections with. Um, but um, the way they've played a part and what they're good for is, you know, just this, even just the, the setup, when we walk in, there's wine and there's snacks and there's fellowship. No, you can't. Sorry. Y'all can do like a, a men in business and maybe have some bourbon and play some pool or. Do you hear that Taylor? We got our blessing. Yeah. It sounds like a plan to me. Okay. Okay. Good. Y'all do that. Um, but yeah, just the atmosphere that we've created or these ladies have created that's created these groups. Um, mm-hmm. Same thing with DFW networking, area networking. Um, I mean, I could go on and on about the groups that 
um, I'm have the pleasure of being a part of. But um, so walk us through that group because if you know there may be a woman in business mm-hmm. uh, watching or listening, uh, she owns her own business, but she's she she may feel like she's on an island, right? Because right? I know especially if you own your you know a single you know uh, business, mm-hmm. then you're by yourself. You may not get that connection with other women that are in business. So Mm -hmm. uh, explain a little bit what happens at these meetings. So the good thing about our, this group, uh, and I'm just going to speak on the Tarrant County area one, just because that's the one I'm, I know more about. Mm. Um, You don't have to be a business owner. You can be in a business. Okay. You know, so we have people who work for banks. We have people who work for realtor offices. We have people who work for uh, financial, um, the, what do you call it? The people that help you manage your money, uh, financial advisors. There it is. Um, you so you don't have to own your own business to be a part of these groups, which I think is great because it, you can get lost mm. in, um, in that. But when you come in, basically you're going to be welcomed. You're going to, again, the atmosphere is set where it's comfortable. Um, you're able to be yourself. You're able to make those connections. Their motto is make friends first and the business will come later. Mm, so like we're not that. pushing any agenda. We're not there to make a dollar. We're there to make the friendships. Yeah. And then this, you know, it's like you, something you've always said that people are going to buy from people that they trust and like. Right. Yeah. And so we're building those relationships first. And I think mm-hmm. that's the most important thing. Cause it takes a lot of the pressure because I'm not a salesman. I don't like being, you sold me 30 years ago. I but I didn't have eyes. to do anything. You know what I mean? Uh. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm not a salesman. And so if, yeah. if you were to tell me that you have to go in and you have to, you know, nail down two people, two, connect, two, two connections and whatever and make a, make a transaction that day, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. But to walk in and be like, hey, these ladies are going to be my friends and they're going to share, like, and subscribe to me just like I'm going to do to them and it's mm. going to help bring business that way, you know? So it's just the atmosphere, um, making the relationships first. Love it. Love it. Um, In the fields uh, traditionally dominated by men, uh, such as, um, you know, entrepreneurship or like you had said, martial arts, how do you navigate and overcome obstacles as a woman? Have you seen any obstacles as a woman in business or martial arts or... Definitely in martial arts. So for those of you that don't know, you know, we do own uh, TX Black Belt Academy, Fort Worth, and then we're in partnership with uh, eight other locations. Um, And so going into that business, I also started training. Um, And so getting, going through training as a woman and going through the martial arts has been harder than the gray's craze. Mm. Um, Just because martial arts is definitely more male dominant than, you know, owning a business right Mm -hmm. i think uh i think it's very easy for women to own businesses these days there's funding out there for uh women-owned businesses you know grants and and stuff like that there's help um so i don't think it's been challenging in starting a business um and in my business with charcuterie it's it's primarily a female well, what's funny is even the martial arts, right? Everybody talks about their target audience, yeah. right? Who's your target audience? Mm-hmm. And uh, so both charcuterie and martial arts, it's crazy. They have the same target audience. They do, but different reasons why. True. You know, true, our true. target audience really is kids, but who's going to sign those kids Who up? Who makes the con- right. Mom. Right, moms, right? Yeah, Soccer moms are the moms. ones driving the vans and the SUVs getting them to karate. So yeah, yeah definitely in that, on that back end of it, yeah. it's definitely our, our focus as women. But right. in the business, you know, I have mm-hmm. one that's male dominant and one that's primarily female because of just charcuterie. and Charcuterie is cool. It it's is manly. Cool. Yeah. Come on. Come on, men. There's a lot of meat Jump and cheese. on the bandwagon. Who doesn't like meat and cheese? <laughs> and eat your veggies. You're an adult. It's not going to hurt you. I used to not. I hated I veggies. <laughs> hated veggies. Yeah. No, I like them, especially with the hummus. It's so good. Yeah. So, and as far as strategies go, um, you know, women don't necessarily put themselves first. Mm. We put ourselves on the back burner. Why and- is that? Because you're right. I mean, you, you look at the the, the traditional female role, right, mm-hmm. with moms, right, mm-hmm. have kids, Right, and that's all you think about is the kids, and it's just how we're wired. It's in our, you know, that's our nature, Mm. you know, uh, nurture and 
and grow. And uh, so, what know. what have you done to put yourself first? I mean, obviously, martial arts training, martial arts. Yes, prioritizing my schedule. Okay, having a structured schedule. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of um, man. Even when the kids were growing up, we bedtime was strict. Like these moms today are letting their kids stay up till 10, 11 o'clock at night. And I'm just thinking, no. no. Negative ghost writer. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Nine o'clock. And that gives me time. Yeah. You know, uh, to at least get a shower yeah. and dinner myself, you know, but just prioritizing I my appreciate time. appreciate those two yeah. things. You're welcome. <laughs> um, and, but there's a certain uh, degree of selfishness you have to have. You know, um, I know we can be butt kicking busy at Gray's Craze, mm. but where am I going at 1030 in the morning when we're busy? You're working out. I'm going to the gym. Hey, I'm so proud of you. Well, thank you. So, you know, for the listeners that really haven't, don't know Selena yet, a um, couple things I want to brag about you on. Oh, okay. Number one, you know, I know your why I'm doing martial arts was different in the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. Just like why we used to hang out together in high school right if you wanted to hang out with me where was it under the hood of a car right under the hood of a car and uh so yeah she knew a lot about cars and you know what an alternator is and how to change spark plugs and all this stuff but uh then it became all right martial arts if i want to hang out with Mm -hmm. him i'm gonna do martial arts and it was sort of not doing it for you but you it changed Mm -hmm. It changed, and that's really where I noticed the growth in your martial arts training. Because you know, not only am I her husband, um, but I'm also her instructor. Yeah. Uh, so wh- she has to call me master, which is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah. loves it. No. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, but you know, your your why changed, mm-hmm. right? And I think once your why changed, then it made all the difference in the world. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, at first it was, I'm just going to do it because he. Well, first of all, because if I'm going to be in the business, I need to know about it, right? Agreed. You know, I didn't, still didn't like it a whole lot. You know, that's okay. Um, but uh, then it uh, shifted to, okay, this is kind of fun, and I'm getting a workout at the same time. Okay. And then it came it, and then of course, for y'all that don't know, I used to be very, very overweight, and I've uh, lost seventy pounds, and so that of course brings confidence and made life a little easier and so i just started falling in love with it Mm. and now i'm yeah so so going working on her jujitsu black belt Mm. she's a brown belt now working on her jujitsu black belt and then has made the goal to go to her third degree black belt in karate yes and i know i know many professor black belts Mm -hmm. i know many high rank karate black belts but i don't know many that have that are professor black belts in jujitsu and a high rank karate black belt that are women that are women right and yeah. so it's uh, to me it's very inspiring right mm-hmm. and then you go on top of that and you're like you know what i'm going to lift weights not just for a month or two months but you're going on like 14 mm-hmm. months over a year now yeah. you've been power lifting as well too yeah i say power lifting yeah, weight lifting weight lifting yeah. yeah not like you know no i'm not like maxing out and stuff like that I'm right just, yeah right so i gotta watch it yeah. You're going to get some muscles. Yeah. Yeah, I got some muscles. <laughs> but anyway, like said, it's just, you know, making self time time for yourself. Yeah. And, and women don't do that. We don't think of ourselves. Um, and sometimes you have to tell people no. You have to tell mm-hmm. your kids no. It doesn't fit. You have to tell your husband no. I can't do it, you know, um, just to have that little bit of time for you yourself. You don't tell me no. Yes, I do. I know. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Hard right. no. <laughs> 30 years. <laughs> yeah. It's happened. All right. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. Uh, supporting other uh, women-owned ventures mm-hmm. and businesses, right? I know you're a very supportive uh, women. I know in martial arts, you've I've helped you with uh, many um, women seminars, mm-hmm. right? Self-defense seminars. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you prioritize supporting, collaborating with fellow women-owned businesses in the in your community, and why do you feel it's critical to uplift and empower women? entrepreneurs or just women in general? Mm -hmm. Well, one thing we've learned in the martial arts is to always ask questions. Mm. And like, I don't know it all. I don't, you know, I I normally, when it comes to business sense stuff, I do rely on you for a lot of it. We may have to bleep that out because our kids might be watching and they think you do. Oh. So we're going to have to like cut that out. No, you can have it for a little bit if you want. Okay. (laughs) Um, But no, um, you know, asking questions and being um, available 
mm. for somebody. You know, um, they give them thirty minutes of your time, or or you know, if I don't have the answer, show them where they get the answer, or find the answer for them, and just just. Like I said, I don't know a lot about business, but I am willing to sit down with somebody and at least listen to them and um, support them that way. You know, know? it's funny. You said, I don't know a lot about business, but you've been in business now with me for quite some time. And I think you know a lot more about business than most people that are just starting up. I understand different parts. So where you're more of the marketing, social media, website, salesman. Yeah, he's the face. (laughs) I'm a workhorse. You are. And I know how to manage people, time, inventory, things. So Mm -hmm. um, if it's in that sphere, I can definitely help. Um, But I really There's a lot of people that struggle with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they do, right? It's time management. Yeah, the time management. It's prioritization, time management. um, Organization. Organization. I'm I'm a list person like you wouldn't believe i hate lists i, I hate like, anytime we go on vacation uh, i'm got in my packing list. list like two weeks early why do you enjoy lists so much um the satisfaction of marking something completed mm. and stay-at-home moms yeah when you got three kids running around or more because i had my two little niece and nephew too so you gotta yeah you hey, forget co- it if you if you're a organizer and you love list comment below mm. if you it's like awesome. it or not just marking it off just yeah. and having all those lines on a piece of paper hmm. grocery store list yeah yeah okay i will say that uh, so i used to work at the rv center and uh at the end of the month we would you know list out all of our w- work orders mm-hmm. and then I, we try to close as many as you can out and i i will say i enjoyed marking them off there whenever I got That's them nice. closed. Yeah. That, that was fun. I miss those days. Yeah. Maybe I need to make a list. Try it. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, and your second question, why do you feel it's crucial to uplift and empower women? Mm-hmm. <sighs> because we can get very discouraged. Mm. I mean, I know men can. Sure. You know, um, but we, uh, a lot of us already go into the mindset of it's a male dominant world or whatever, you know, which I don't, I don't really like that myself. You don't subscribe to that. I don't subscribe to that just because Mm. I think if you're living and breathing, I think you can, Sure. you know, it's just a a mind mindset, you know, and it took me a while to learn that, you know, I always felt regret or uh, guilty for even a little bit of success. Yeah. Um, But, you know, just got to put the hard work in, but um, I think it's just because we are emotional, yeah, and we feed off other people's emotions. And so, when somebody's coming to us and believing in us and investing in us and praying for us, and you know, it it definitely makes us want to pay it forward. Um, it just ups, uplifts us, and and uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I think there's something about just giving too that changes. Your mindset. Yeah, that's one thing I think I was just telling you the other day, you know, um, I've definitely been on a journey with my relationship with the Lord harder this past year than I think I have in my entire Christian life, which has been since 1998, you know. Mm. Um, But again, you know, (laughs) when you're an empty nester, you have more time to uh, uh, dive into that stuff. But I was telling you that um, yeah, I'm reading Jenny Allen. Uh, ladies, if you love Jenny Allen, if you love to read, go get some Jenny Allen books and read all her books. She's amazing. But um, just talking about, uh, I'm was reading Get Out of Your Head. I'm in my head a lot. And taking your thoughts captive, I never understood what that meant and how to do that. And I think I've recently learned that one of the tools that, and she says it in the book, that, that is given to us is to serve. Mm. Um, and have a servant mindset, and that will definitely change your perspective, you know. Yeah. And we do a lot of stuff for free, you know, and with sure. our time. And there's times where I'm like, man, when is that going to come back to me? Mm. It may not in this lifetime, but I'm ju- like, like when I say just now grasping that concept, I mean within the last week or two. Yeah. Um, but yeah, serving is uh, definitely, yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's very difficult to be angry and mad 
and grateful at the same time. Yes. Yeah, you can't. It's, it's impossible. Yeah. Right? You can't. To be angry and mad and to be grateful, right? And it's okay to be angry and mad, but don't stay there. Mm. Right. Yeah, I think so too, right? I mean, your emotions are your emotions yeah. and you're entitled to them, and, but don't stay there and, yep. and watch kind of how you act in mm. those moments. It's cool. Yeah. All right. So being a mother, business owner, you know, how do you manage the balance um, that demands from, you know, being entrepreneurship with uh, family responsibilities? I shared in our first episode a little bit about me. If you haven't watched that, go back to our first episode. Um, I talked to the I talked to the audience about the railroad tracks, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Um, but what are some things that you do? Well, my situation is going to be a little bit different than maybe a lot, just because again, being having adult children, you know, we don't have mm. kids in the home anymore. Well, let's let's go back then. But let's go back to when they exactly. were six, eight, and ten, and we took over. You know, and started with TX Black Belt Academy. Mm. Um, you drag them along. <laughs> <laughs> Our kids had drug problems. Yeah. We drug them. We drug them everywhere. Arts, drug right. them to martial arts. That's right. Um, but yeah, we had to bring them with us to the school. Yeah. Um, they trained, and I trained, and then we would, you know, leave you at the school. We would go home. Yep. Do the nightly duties. You know, if homework wasn't done up at the school, then it was bath, dinner, bed, and just rinse and repeat. And But again, it was having that that structured schedule. You know, we knew Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursday in the evenings, this is what we were doing. And then Saturday all day. Yeah. Um, that reminds me of a, a phrase that uh, John Garrett and I were talking about, mm-hmm. I don't know, it was probably six months ago, about how discipline brings freedom. Mm-hmm. Right? Whenever you're disciplined in your schedule necessarily, mm-hmm. right? And you have a very disciplined schedule, and that brings freedom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And and that goes hand in hand with, you know, having to say no, mm. you know, and, and being okay with that. Yeah. You know, kids were very busy with, oh my gosh, if there's any moms out there who has a child in high school band, oh. you know, it sucks the life <laughs> out of you. <laughs> it is draining. And all yeah. three of my kids did it. And I was the band booster president and um, still doing the businesses and stuff, but. We had like a nine-year sentence. We did? I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, how many more years you got on your sentence? Yeah, uh, nine. two. <laughs> two more years. Yeah. No. Um, but being there for the kids was way more important. Mm. You know, I think they uh, appreciate. I'm just glad that you could. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean there's a lot of moms that and and families that want to do that. They mm. really do. That's probably their deep. And that's why most people go into entrepreneurship. That's why mm-hmm. they go into owning their own business because they want the freedom to be able yeah. to make their own schedule and yeah. have the opportunity to, you know, spend mm-hmm. more time with their family and stuff. And it's hard. It is hard. And but you know, I've, I've talked to, I've talked to many business owners really on a weekly basis. You know, and uh, tell them, look, the first two or three years in business mm-hmm. is the hardest part of business. Yes. Right. I mean, you can't open a business and think that. You know, I'm just going to open the doors, turn the open sign on. And they're going to come. Got money in the drawer, and I'm just waiting for and it's not. It doesn't happen mm-hmm. that way, right? And mm-hmm. it's a grind, and it's tough, and it's difficult. Yeah. And and I look back at whenever our kids were little and all that that we went through, and there was times that our friends were like, hey, y'all want to come out and do this? We're I'm like, sorry, we can't. Sorry, we can't, right? Yeah. We're stuck in the rut, yeah. and we got to you know commit to these things that we committed to, but – there's freedom on the other side of that, yeah. you know, and it's like after you open your business and you're grinding and, and then eventually, you know, at first you have to say, okay, this is a job. Yeah. My, my job is marketing. My mm-hmm. job is doing all the things I need to do. Yeah. And, and and one day your job will become your business yeah. where someone else is doing those things. And now you can, again, open Stand another back. one. Yep. If you're crazy like us, open a couple more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and the kids growing up, and being mm. able to take that over for us was a huge, yeah, like, you know, huge yeah. relief. Um, but, but getting them involved, um, but yeah, you know, make your list. <laughs> <laughs> make you your know, list. Make your list. But uh, yeah, just prioritizing yeah. your schedule, yeah. structure, um, and then. Yeah, what if, are some what is some ad- advice that you would give? Yeah. Okay, so you talk to talk a little bit about the the maybe the woman or the mom that has the kids, mm-hmm. right? Younger kids like what our kids were when we started, mm-hmm. right? And then also talk to maybe the mom or 
where they're like you, you know, you empty nester, mm-hmm. right? So go back to two pieces of advice that you would give the business owner with little kids. Ooh, just one. Yeah, whatever. I would say it's our show. We can do what we want. <laughs> um, ask for help. Mm. Help watching the kids. Mm. Help um, cleaning your business. Help. I mean, just ask if there's something you need help with. Just ask. Yeah. Yeah, and you're going to have people around you like, hey, is there anything I can do for you? Yes, you know, but mm-hmm. just ask for help. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. What about the uh, what about the mom or woman in business um, has older kids? Uh, see if they – actually, it kind of goes back to when they are the little kids and then painting the picture for them – like we mm-hmm. kind of did with our kids, painting yeah. that picture of, hey, this could be yours one day. Mm-hmm. And, what you know, building that legacy and maybe getting them involved with it. Number one, you're spending time with them. Right. You know, number two, you're teaching them. They're learning. And then one day they can, you know, have yeah. this that you've developed. So, um, yeah, here's the cool thing. So next week, next week's episode, we're going to talk to, or I'm going to talk to, um, Ray Titus's son, mm. Andrew Titus, the president of fully promoted franchise, yeah. right? And so his dad started the business. Now mm-hmm. he's coming into it and about that legacy and, and stuff. So I'm mm-hmm. really looking forward to the next yeah. week's conversation for that. Yeah. If you can get your kids involved at any age, you know, like our 20 year old, she was working as an employee for us and um, she really wanted to finish school. And because uh, we've never been one to push college. Right. Um, we don't have college degrees and not saying, I mean, if you're going to be a doctor or a lawyer or whatever, please go to college. Yeah. If you're going to be a brain surgeon, yeah, please. I want to see your credentials. Yeah. But you know, to be an entrepreneur, you know, you just have to have the motivation. Actually, if you are an entrepreneur, you already have the, the heart and the desire. Yeah. I think that's what makes you an entrepreneur, you know, but a successful business owner is way different than being an entrepreneur. I think, Yeah, um, I think entrepreneur is more of the character, Mm. you know, in my opinion, but, um, yeah, just, you know, offer, offer them a way in that they can be a Mm. part of it. Yeah. I mean, put them to work. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've, I've fired Landon a couple of times. Yeah. He'll tell you. Yeah. So if you're willing to hire them, you got to be willing to fire them. So, yep. All right. Well, um, what else makes you tick? What's a couple other things that you could share with the audience? These, so now we're sort of late in the episode. Mm -hmm. So those that are actually listening now, they actually care. So (laughs) they're getting the good stuff now. We're going to save all the good stuff for the end. Well, um, I think I'd like to go back a little bit just to the, the training part of it. Please. Yeah. Just because. Uh, a lot of women, uh, again... I want to speak on that, too, but after you, please. Oh, okay. Find some kind of training that you can do mm. um, and make it a priority. Mm. Uh, if you can fit it in, fit it in. Don't Not even if. If you can um, fit it in, get it in. Yeah. One thing about my training journey as a mom with three kids growing up and then now as... When you say multi- training, martial arts. Martial arts, yeah, yes. okay. Um or weightlifting, but martial arts just because it's I'm more passionate about it. But um, whenever you have the kids that are growing up and then going and, and kids are out, but now we've got all these businesses and stuff, um, you know, it's a journey. Mm. And I want I want people to find that and get on that journey. Mm. You know, a lot of people, a lot of women are like, well, I don't have time for that. Or they don't, they see it as a uh, I got to have a certain time, like three years to get this done or four years to get this done. And my journey has been since 2013 with yeah. the jujitsu part. Okay. And it's okay to take days off and it's okay to, I'm only going to do it one day this week. And it's okay to, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to confuse anybody, but I just, I want you to find a place to train yeah, and I want you to, that. because it's, it's time for you. Mm. You can get on a treadmill and you can go do, you know, gladiator, can't gladiator and all that, which I'm not. Those are great physical resources, but training martial arts has a result at the end. Mm. Not only are you getting a workout in, Mm -hmm. but you also can defend yourself. Mm. 
And so I don't know. I just I'm going to be on a podcast on Thursday. Okay. Uh, old Gorilla Jiu Jitsu podcast, ah, friend of ours, right. and that's going to be my soapbox. Is the whole. So I want you to tune okay. in and listen to that because okay. we're going to be talking about women and training, and and the struggles and stuff like that. So I won't go yeah. too much into it, but. Um, yeah, John will get mad if I steal all his yeah. podcast right now. So. But uh, it's a passion for me. Yeah, I can see it. I'm very passionate about women in business, and I'm very passionate about women in training. Yeah, I love it. That's just it. it. The, the, so what I noticed, the connectivity, and maybe I'll talk about it on mm-hmm. your jiu-jitsu podcast, but critical thinking skills. Right, we were talking uh, last night to Carrie, mm. and she was talking about you know critical care. Yeah, she's a flight nurse. Yeah, right. So the ability to be able to give critical care in that moment that you have to give it. Right, you got all these things going on, and it's like you have to clear clearly think about giving this life care mm-hmm. to this patient. Um, martial arts is it, it breeds breeds that it Mm -hmm. breeds that critical thinking right because you know you may have a 125 pound gorilla trying to tap you out Mm -hmm. right and you have to think okay well i i have to keep breathing i gotta watch my arms make sure those don't get extended stuff like that and and you have to keep a very clear mind in that moment Mm -hmm. right having that training for such a long time do you think that that correlates to your business skills like on a busy day yes. at work or whatever right yes. how does that it correlate? trains your mind and your body to step back mm. and think first mm. you know it trains you to take a inventory of the situation mm. on top of that the other thing that's helped me that I've known recently is the time my quiet time I've been spending mm. you know I remember I told you the other day I was like I feel like you know, because we've been doing business together since 2008. Mm-hmm. And I never really understood. I don't like, I understand P&Ls and marketing and all that, the the, the numbers. And st- I just don't get it. Yeah. And, you know, our software system sometimes is confusing um, with the martial arts. And there was an account that I was helping uh, the call center fix, and it clicked. I, mm-hmm. I was able to understand this. Because it was had to do with money and payments and stuff like that, and I remember telling you, mm. I feel like the more time that I spend in my quiet time with the Lord and and Bible studies and reading and stuff, I feel like I've gotten smarter, <laughs> so yeah. to speak. Like no. my brain is able to, so I, I'm picking up more on business sense stuff just mm-hmm. because I think my brain is being being worked out. Being it's a muscle, out. right? Yeah, it's a muscle. Yeah. And so the more you read, doesn't mm-hmm. you know necessarily mean you know, you have to read these deep spiritual books or anything, Mm-mm. but just the the practice of reading and learning, yeah. right? The memorization yeah. that comes with even martial arts, right? Mm-hmm. Um, helps a lot in your day to day ability, your capacity of learning. Yeah. It's almost like a sponge, yeah. right? You pour water just on a hard sponge, then most of the water rushes, rushes off. off but yeah. You get that sponge wet, you wring it out, then you pour water on it. It's going to soak up a lot more right. water, right? And the same thing with your mind. And yep. so that's cool. So martial arts, yeah. quiet time. Yeah. Meditation, meditation, reading, reading mm-hmm. self-help. Yep. Um, all have, are, yeah, I would do it. Yeah. Good. Do it's it. good advice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, I I will say this before. I'll say it again. This is probably going to be the sexiest, most beautiful Stop. guest I ever have on the show. Until um, you have me on. <sighs> until yeah. we have Taylor Perky. Uh, <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> uh, but no, I really appreciate you. Thanks um, for having me. Uh, it's I a great episode. I didn't ramble too much. But. No, no. And I think it's really fitting for Valentine's week. Oh, yeah. To have, uh, I didn't my, think about it that way until you sat down and said that. Yeah, it's my sweetheart on here. So now you have a lot to you have a lot to give to people, and you give a lot to people. And uh, you know, I think it's I, I I look at you like sometimes like an onion, right? There's many <laughs> la- multiple layers to you, right? And just yeah. on the surface, you may look at this and be like, oh, you know, uh, I, I want to stay away, maybe a little bit or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I think the more people invest into you and love on you, then then they're going to get that tenfold from your yeah, caring heart. Because that that wall comes down. Yeah. So. Cool. Well, again, if you're watching still, then uh, appreciate you for sure or listening. Um, 
on our YouTube channel, please like and subscribe and uh, share it out if you found value in that. And uh, we will see you next time on The Biz Life.